Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Akasha Searcy with the Self Illumination Podcast, and I'm just over the moon thrilled about today's guest. His name is Michael Murphy Burke, and he is all things sound. Michael is a vibrational sound therapist working throughout the Atlanta area and, of course, various wellness centers, treatment centers, private and corporate sessions as well. And he is going into his 20th year as a professional in the field of sound. And of course, this has blossomed. He has blossomed his own life um, alongside others through the power of sound. His first book of poetry titled Dancing with the Divine has touched many and is available at all of his events, as well as most places that host him on, as well as on Amazon and through his website, which is michaelmurphyburke.com. In his second book of poetry, you all know how much I love poetry, entitled Dancing with the Shadows, will arrive later this year. So Michael, welcome and thank you again so much for joining me today. Thank you, Akasha. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So, you know, I love that um, I have this podcast that's like we have the video part on YouTube and then the audio part is on a few other channels. And so people who are watching this on YouTube, they're going to get to see that it looks like you're in a space of sound. Why don't you tell our listeners kind of like what all you've got around you there? Yes, this is a uh, room in my home here in Alpharetta where I got set up a couple of years back to do Zoom When the whole COVID thing happened, I couldn't go into many places and many places were not having uh, their clients come in. It was all through Zoom. So I became uh, kind of uh, past my technology uh, (laughs) limiting uh, stuff that I wasn't, I wasn't that good at all of that stuff, but I said, let's get good at it. It's another uh, area to learn in life. And I set this room up with some extra instruments I had because I traveled quite a bit and I I very much enjoyed going to the places and playing live for people. The vibrations, the sounds that are there live are a big part of the experience. And I didn't feel you got that through Zoom, but over time we learned that you can still feed that energy just like distance healing and distance uh, work that a lot of uh, energy workers do. It can travel just better when it's in person but let's not use better or worse it was just different so i set this room up to go into the zoom calls and we did it quite a bit and got a better microphone learned some ways that it would get across better and um this room is now in my home i just leave it set up because occasionally things come up when i can use it like this and uh it's where I play for myself when I come home. I, I do it sound most every day of my life somewhere, sometimes two or three times a day. I get to create sound for others as well as for me. And sometimes on my days off, I want to play sound. I love it so much. And I love what it does for my temple, my body. And I come in this room and just play for me with various instruments. I don't bring out to travel with much like a, a mountain dulcimer my tambora and several other gongs and different chimes I have behind me here that it's just too much to pack up and bring, but it sure is nice to come in this room and play. And it always opens me to new ways to play the instruments I do travel with. And I can switch out sometimes. It's very interesting to me that, you know, days come when I'm getting ready to go to different centers and um, healing places where I work and, different instruments will call me to bring them that day. So I come in this room, bathe in grace and go, okay, who'd like to come out today? (laughs) And different things come into my, okay, you're coming with me today. And it's just, uh, it's a golden way to live. Every day is a blessing. So that's what this room's all about. It's a, it's a music room, but basically my whole house is. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that leads us into our next, my next question for you, which is, I want to know if you can tell us how you got into sound and like, what was that moment where you're like, I'm hooked? Okay. The moment, the moment where I was actually hooked was 
I was doing some self-help work, uh, self-alignment, becoming aware of my own greatest uh, expression through a tantric therapist I was working with. And she was really showing me how to bring that love for all into me. She goes, first, it has to be you, Michael. You truly have to love yourself. This was a uh, This was something I realized I hadn't done enough of. So was very good at giving love away, but I was not good at receiving it. So I wanted to go further into that and see what was going on with me and why wasn't I loving me to the point of uh, actually being able to say I love you to me. So she was helping me with that. And at one of the sessions, it's kind of in a trance from what she had done to me with uh, just words and sound and in the middle of that session, she put something on my solar plexus on my tummy and tapped it. And it was a Himalayan bowl. Well, I just disappeared into the sound. And it really, it really opened me up to, uh, to love. And after the session was done, I, that's when I I said, man, what, what did you do in the middle here? Something, what did you place on me? And she showed me this beautiful Himalayan bowl. She was like, put this bowl on your, on your solar plexus. And I played it to resonate with your divinity, your, your soul, your, your divine. And I went, well, I got to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Fortunately, she was traveling literally in the next couple of days going to India to do some more study and where, where she was learning a lot. And uh, she goes, you know, I'm not going to be using my bowl. Can I leave it with you for a while? And I said, yes, of course. So she left this beautiful, it's about a 12 inch Himalayan bowl, antique, just gorgeous. And I never really experienced anything like it, didn't know much about it. So that opened the door for me to sound the way I do it now. It was just gold. It was beautiful. This alchemical process happened all throughout me where I said, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. And so I started doing it with just that one bowl. And uh, that's how it kind of started. And it blossomed a lot from there as I found Mandara Cromwell, Don Simmons, International Sound Therapy, and realized, boy, there's a lot of people doing sound. I just wasn't in that field, that whole awareness thing, the, the blinders on a horse kind of thing, you know, wasn't in my field because I didn't know about it. Once I knew about it, it was everywhere. It's like when you buy a car and you realize everybody's got a car just like it. I yeah. never noticed it before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I love your, your candor. And it was so like, I could feel those emotions from you through the screen. Right. And I think that is, moment. yeah, it, it, like you still, it resonates with you still. Oh, and I it, think brings, uh, it brings tears up quite a bit. Tears are a wonderful way to move energy through our system. So many people think I cr I'm crying a lot. It's not really crying. I'm overflowing with joy and it comes out as tears. But uh, you get very emotional because it's a magical moment in my life. It changed everything. Oh, yeah, but I really I, I'm so grateful that you're sharing that because I think a lot of people, they don't they don't hold on to that beauty sometimes, right? When they have those magical moments, oh, yeah. they're just on to the next thing. And I still see her every now and then. The lady I was working with, she lives down in Decatur. At least she used to. But every now and then I'll run into her and I just have to hug her and tell her how much that moment changed my life. Truly. Yeah. Truly. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. So I, again, like I love how this conversation is flowing. How do you how do you feel like you've seen what you're offering your sound journeys affect people, right? Like, what do you notice in their bodies and like when they keep coming back? Because I, you know, I've known Michael for a while and I've seen your clients like they keep coming back because they're hooked on the sound and the vibrations yeah. of how they feel. It's so beautiful to see. Thank you, Akasha. Yes, it's. Uh... I'm I'm very adamant on telling people that it's a, it's an extremely cumulative experience. The more you do this, the deeper you will go. The sound is a surface thing at first, and many people come in what we call the monkey mind. It's just going to town. They're like, 
it's not just him making the sound. It's too much sound for one guy. What is that sound? What's going on? <laughs> did I leave a? Uh, did I leave the oven on? Shit's just happening in the head, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's gonna happen the first few times, maybe, maybe several after that. But sooner or later, I believe the sound, which is our truth, you know, and each person has their own truth. There's no particular way or sound that works for everyone. It's just sound. You are made of vibration. So when you tune up the temple, I like to call it tuning up the temple with the power of sound, especially not a sound that the, the body, the brain, the, the whole being is used to. You're used to a structure. It wants to find patterns. I don't do any of that. Sound therapy is a beautiful way just to escape into the moment because the moment is creating energy and sound all around us. You can just stand in nature and witness that. It's not silence. I call it deepening the silence. When you go into places where there's wind rustling through the trees, water flowing by, maybe you hear distant traffic, doesn't matter. It all turns into a, a, a kind of melody of the universe. And mm. this in itself is very healthy for us because we're used to patterns. We want to bring our past experience and create this moment. It's not really the best way to do it. The, let's not say best. The more divinely aligned way to perceive things is to allow them to be in that moment. Sound is very big on that because it brings us to our, I'd call it our creation. We're made of vibration. So when we send vibration through the temple, it kind of grabs the frequencies it requires, tunes up the places where it's not hearing those sounds and the sounds that are in dissonance that are really not in a proper place in the temple are allowed to drift out. And all this is done through the vibration. We don't have to do anything. So we're called human beings. I want to drop in. I want to drop in what you just said. I want to echo sure. that back for our listeners, which was you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You know, I think in a world where people are already <laughs> out of balance and overwhelmed because of the responsibilities that they're navigating, hmm. that doing something to heal can feel like another thing to do. And I, I think that that's a really fine point to note for people is that with sound, it's effortless. And, you know, I love how you said it. It's like this. I always call it the symphony of life when I'm talking about doing my crystal bowls and the gongs, because it's, you're going to have sounds in life that resonate with you and sounds in life that are non-resonant with you. Yes. The key is to not be attached to either and just let them move through you because what's meant for you will align with you. And I love how you said that, right? That divine alignment. Beautiful. It is divine alignment. And it's already there. We are not required to find it we're required to step into it it's uh like Rumi wrote about love because i don't have to go find love i have to find all the obstacles i built that get in the way of love love's already there same with sound your vibration this divine energy that creates you is already aligned with the divine of the universe already there we have put so much stuff in the way that we crowd it out and we stop hearing it, what I would call our own song. We're called human beings for a reason, not human doings. So when you Man. allow yourself to be and just, I would say, allow is just a really good word. No other word. You, when you allow and surrender to this music that is you, you are made of music. So when we tune up the temple, we come into this space of grace. And that in itself is very healing for the body. When the body hears its own song, it can step into all kinds of stuff. Chemicals are released. Um, some are very powerful psychedelics within our system that connect us with the divine consciousness. And I have so many people in my events that have these grand visions and they're like, How'd you do that? And I go, well, the beautiful thing is I didn't do it. I provided a space for you to do it. You have that ability. You are the sacred sanctuary. When you step into that, you know, it always reminds me of the temple. You know, when, when you enter a temple, they call it an entrance because you go into trance. 
in trance. Mm -hmm. When you get to the altar in the heart of the temple, you're altered. Sound can truly alter you. So that is what I do in my journeys. And when I take people there, some are familiar with it from various, let's say, substances they've done in the past or medicines they've experienced. But uh, you don't need any of that. You can do it with sound that's already inside of you. The, the... Amen. You know, I this is what I call on getting getting high on your own supply. Totally. It's already with because us. It, it's already within you. It's why I've never really... <laughs> I've never really been a drug user in my life because right. I grew up in the world of yoga and we have breath techniques that in less than a minute, you are turned on, oh. tuned up, tapped oh, in. Yeah. You and know it's what I think? DMT, yes. Yes. The most it's powerful really, hallucinogenic I, on the planet already inside of us. <laughs> yeah. And I think that this, I love that we're having this conversation because this is a, what a lot of people don't realize about sound. I, I feel like oh, sometimes yeah. I am going out like uh, it, it's funny because I get this image right now of Hare Krishna's. I always love Hare Krishna's because Hare Krishna's are happy. They're yeah. high on God. Yeah. And what are they doing? They're making music, baby. Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're living in a state of music. Yeah. Yes. And I think that that when you understand that that is your natural state of flow and flow is how the universe collaborates and creates all things all consciousness is fluid i believe then understanding that we we have this ability to ride these sound waves together in harmony the external and the internal you know and i love that you just said we are all our own unique song oh yes and so many of us are disconnected from that completely completely yeah yeah and my are, like, my my experience with sound that like just bloom i mean i i don't know if i've ever shared this with you michael i know some of the listeners that might be hearing this they'll know but i i had <laughs> i was doing spiritual study and i was in this many weeks of spiritual study no internet no engagement with the outside world it was just really beautiful container and there was a 10 minute gong bath after a Kriya that we had done for the heart space. Nice. And I had this experience in 10 minutes, very short amount of time, sound washing over me. I'm in a clearly an altered state <laughs> where my tongue hit the roof of my mouth so hard that it's like, I, I literally saw lightning bolts on the side of my tongue and it brought nice. me out. I mean, nice. it was beautiful. About four hours later, I pulled the teacher aside that had facilitated that sound experience. And um, I said, this is, this is what I saw. This is what I felt. And this is what's going on in my field right now, which is making it challenging to try and like come back in and focus. I mean, it just blew me wide open. Nice. And she sat down with me. I know it was so awesome. She sat down with me. I love to hear that. Yeah, probably about an hour later. And she was like, this was the Lord of the throat chakra because it was a tantric ceremony. Sure. There's this, this, and this. And she's like, I think you just got activated. And I was like, I don't think I know. Yeah. And nice. it, less than a week later, I went and bought a bunch of gongs, found a teacher <laughs> and haven't looked back since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i love that thank you for sharing that yeah, yeah are, so are incredibly powerful when we first started studying music with international sound therapy association they taught us you know the bowls are very nice they can caress energy and comfort people but if someone's holding on to something or you need to move something you're gonna need a gong gong will gong will knock it out you know but the bowl it's not working go to the gong so we had great success with gongs and learned uh i came to a place where it was a happy mixture the gongs the bowls now i do flute harp various other instrumentation because my goal is is to have that client or a group of people lose their spatial awareness they are not present as a being anymore just in their body they are present as the one the universe the one song 
is all of us. So your part of the song is highly important or you would not be here. So Amen. when your body hears that song, it tunes up and it starts to really open to the abilities that are, you know, latent in most people. And some people have not heard their own song since they were in the womb. So I get many clients who say it was very womb-like. I go, yes, because it's, it's a rebirthing of your cosmic consciousness that maybe you haven't felt since you came out and were slapped on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. true. Talk about a harsh entry. <laughs> yeah. When you came out to this world, and I haven't heard my song since I was born. Let's hear it. Well, bam. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slap me a song right out of you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I love that you compared that about how the bowls are a little different, you know, like even metal oh, yeah. bowls are different than crystal bowls. Oh yeah. And this is why, you know, there's, there's all different types of symbols or gongs. And this is why mm. when people are talking about like, what kind of sound should I get into? My answer is always try all of it. Yes. I agree. You know, and, and one of the thing that I always hear about your sound journeys that people love is that you do that that you layer in all these different instruments. And oh, yeah. I'm curious if, if you, if someone's listening to this and they're like, how do I get into doing this? You know, what, what suggestions would you make for them? I would highly recommend a bowl to begin with because it's so much more than a bowl. And I like Himalayan bowls. I have a couple of crystal bowls right here with me. And, and I don't travel with them much. One, because they're a little fragile. And I do this 30, 40 times a month. So constantly in and out of the vehicle and in and out of places. Uh, Himalayan bowls, much more durable. And they, they hang tight with uh, everything I do. So to get one bowl is a magical experience on the opening of your ability to be in the power of sound because it's already there. Like we said earlier, we just built a lot of shit in the way. Once we find it through a bowl, we realize it's not a bowl. It's, it's a connection to God, walk and talk and Buddha, whatever you'd like to call the great spirit. That's how it speaks through vibration. So the bowl starts to all of a sudden almost sing before you touch it it makes different sounds and you start to realize oh that's because i'm the one interacting that bring that sound to fruition now if i'm doing the bowl and i get a lot of people when i used to teach well my bowl doesn't sing okay yes it does <laughs> there's nothing wrong with your bowl yeah <laughs> there's something like you have to center your energy very yogi to say it comes back to the breath because it does every time when you really focus your breathing and you're connected to the energy each breath is a gift you know we don't take a breath we're given a breath each time and what we do with that breath out is our gift in return once we truly start to embody that the bowl will start to sing and you realize oh my god i'm a huge part of this creation of the moment which is creating me and as I create me, I'm creating the energy around me, which is creating me. This beautiful symbiosis starts to flow. It's music. It's, it's what we would call universal music. And everything is that. Everything vibrates. And that some of us don't get it, that's okay. They're coming along. They'll come to their song when they're supposed to. There's no time limit on this. And sound is a great way to realize that because time does disappear. All the time at my journeys, people, they're like, God, Mike, I, it felt like it was two minutes, but it's been an hour and a half. I love Other hearing people, that. Oh, yeah. Because I it's like my, it's my favorite thing when I do the gong bass. They're like, how long did you just play those three gongs? Yeah. And I'm like, well, it was 52 minutes. They're like, no, it was like three <laughs> minutes. They're just like in another land. Yeah. And, you know, I love that you said that the the universal song, because I think that this is by far one of the greatest, to me, it is the greatest gift of sound is that frequency is universal. Yes. And it, yeah, it taps us all into that unified field of one. And I love that. It's true. So do I. Yeah. 
and it's yeah. why I, it's why I do it. And I don't, uh, I don't think of it as a job or that I have to go do it. I get to go do it. I get paid literally to live my life, to breathe. It's kind of amazing. It's um, it every day. Yeah. It's just so beautiful to, to be able to share such an effortless tool with others. Oh my. And every time I do it for others, it gets done to me. I exactly. slip into a state of grace that the universe is flowing through me so beautifully that I am, I am not me, I am all. But that's how things get to each person in the room that are supposed to. It can get rid of the dissonance, bring in the resonance, all because I'm allowing and surrendering to the energies flowing through me to tap into everyone in the room. Up to them what happens from that moment on, but I provided a soundscape for them to go into and find their truth because it's a personal thing where godzillion different expressions of the one who knows how it's going to come out in you i don't know and it makes no difference to me i just want to see you come out in tune when it's like a radio station right if you're if you're not quite tuned in you're getting a lot of static a lot of people yeah. live in a state of static and it's not healthy and the body starts to express through various ways, hey, something's going on. It's not your health, it's not your body. You're not in tune. Once you tune up, amazing what starts to happen with the healing abilities of this magical temple we were given. It just wants mm -hmm. to be in tune. <laughs> yeah, it just wants to be in harmony, right? It wants to yeah. syncopate with the one. And yeah. until, I love that you just said a lot of people are living in that static. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that they don't even realize that they're in the static until oh, they no. start having sound experiences and having clarity or, you know, the contemporary language for it is downloads, but they're getting these yes. impactfully insightful moments because of a new layer of frequency alignment with source. Very well put. <laughs> and I, I think, I, I think, you know, as, as offerers of sound you know because like you said it doesn't feel like a job when i'm doing it because it's <laughs> happening for me too so as space holders of sound it, it's like i look around the room sometimes and i i i feel you on the tears because you can see people's bodies aligning do you feel like oh, you yeah. can see that yeah isn't it oh, it's dude. just so beautiful to get to witness that it's magical to walk around the room. One of my favorite parts, and a lot of people that have been coming to see me for years, are like, I like when you walk around and come near us. But sometimes I don't have to. I can start to and sit back behind my table, and they will perceive that I'm still walking around the room because my energy is floating about the room, going near each one of them. And that is the presence of sound with, within them that... It's just a uh, it's just a magical thing when I look down and I'm walking around the room. Sometimes there's way too many people for me to walk around the room, but somehow I do it. And several people who have watched me, because sometimes they're like, I'm going to have to watch you, dude, because I'm not sure how you do all this. And I go, okay, doesn't matter. But if you'd like to, good luck. You're going to nod off and go back into mm -hmm. sound. You can't watch for long without going. <laughs> you drift <laughs> down. so they say it looks like you're floating mike it looks like you're floating around the room i don't know if you're actually walking around the room made sense to me and i thought oh that's how i get around all these people i i not claiming to levitate but i think i float around the room as an energy because everything i'm seeing is energy i don't see yeah. people after the sound starts when i'm in the middle of the show and i decide to walk around at that point I am seeing a whirlpool of energies and they're mostly colors and waves and uh, some fractal stuff, but mostly it's a flowing energetic vibe that seems like the conjunction of many rivers flowing together. And I know that's when something special is happening in the room. So I want to go walk in that. I want to be in it. And I know everyone is that that's what I'm going through. And we're, we're not, separate with this one flowing energy so as i bathe in that energy and walk through it i perceive some people but mostly it's just color and 
as I bring the instruments close to certain areas, they're vibrational instruments. This is the beauty of it. They start to sing on their own. I try to hold a chime still over someone and then watch what their energy does. And some people, that chime spins like crazy. That's Other people, awesome. it goes kind of dead. Yeah, I'm like, okay, there's something not moving in this person's energy. Let's rattle or shake or ocean over them. Something to help their energy move. Bottom line, I'm an energy practitioner. I want to see your energy moving, not attached in any way to how it moves. Doesn't matter to me. How would I know the best movement for your energy? I don't. But this, the vibration does, the universe does. When I allow that connection to be made and their energy moves, it's moving in a beneficial manner. What I like to call MBO, the most beneficial outcome will arise if we get out of the way god darn it <laughs> yeah we're it's you know i love that you gave me this beautiful image of bathing in the beauty of sound you know yes. really being, being baptized by this river of sound that you're getting to walk through right and just help people align and what i'd love for you to do michael if you don't mind is tell everybody how they can find you i know i said your website but say that again tell us are you on instagram facebook like how can everyone follow you to learn about your sound journeys yes i'm on facebook and instagram facebook i think i have three different pages michael burke is my main one and i think it's just michael burke i believe that's the the most prevalent one that most of the stuff is on there's another page Michael Burke, Dancing with the Divine, more of my poetry, more things along that line, and Michael Burke, Sound Artist, more of the work I do with uh, treatment centers and, and the, uh, let's call it the treatment center angle of everything. But Michael Burke, just my regular page, is right there where most of my events are posted. You can keep up and follow me through that, and you can contact me there as well. Instagram, I am Michael Burke 801. And I, I think Facebook and Instagram share a lot of stuff now. So when I post one, the other one will be posted too. And same thing, you can contact me through there. And then of course I do events all around the Atlanta area and sometimes out in Eatonton in Madison, Georgia and travel some doing events. So good to stay in touch with me through the social media because I do post and I'm active on that. I like it. I feel it is a, a, a divine thing, this social media. I can touch people all around the world. I get most of my bowls, gongs, and instruments from people that have I've never met. They live in places where this is what they do. They make bowls. They make gongs. Hey, we see what you do. We'd like to talk to you about playing our stuff. So it's really opened the world to me through sound. Yeah, again, right? Always paving the way for the, the symphony to come together. It's so yeah. beautiful. Well, everybody that's listening, um, I will tell you that all of the links that Michael just mentioned will be right underneath this video for those of you watching on YouTube. And then for those of you just listening, you're always welcome to reach out to me or check out Michael's IG page, Facebook, or check out his website. In the meantime, thank you all so much for listening and Stay illuminated, everybody.